Welcome to Unbiased and On the Fence. I'm Shane. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this wonderful Monday evening after the conference. And boy, am I wiped out. Now, I tell you what, this is going to be a fun show. I've been looking forward to it. Today, we bring back Buddhist author Von Galt to share the ancient Buddhist perspective on how we transition to the intergalactic golden age of humanity. Vaughn will talk about the Starseed Alien Ambassador QHHT hypnosis cases she gets, Buddhist perspective on Mandela effects, awakening, ascension, and getting over our third dimensional drama so we can transition peacefully to our juicy fifth dimensional reality. She will explain how the Earth is moving further into a parallel reality that exists in the fifth dimension. Her Hmong Buddhist indigenous beliefs speak of a time when we switch from the cycle of separation into the new cycle of unity consciousness, which ushers Earth into the golden age of humanity with an interstellar future. What is this probable interstellar future that ancient tribes worldwide waited a long time to welcome in? And what can we everyday people do to help accelerate with the pace of Earth's fifth dimensional Merkaba? Let's lift off. Welcome back, Ron. <laughs> it's going to lift <laughs> off into the vortex. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, we, you know, uh, I, thank you again for having me up on the show. Again, I love the community, um, the Mandela Effect community, my peoples. Um, yeah. So, and, you know, such an open, open um, mindset for, you know, different ways to love and live in the fifth dimension energy. So um, we actually, we're actually going to, to kind of change it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, the right. agenda. Cause, yeah. Cause I asked Vaughn, I told her because a lot of us have a, a rich Christian background and we love the, the teachings of Jesus. And we've come to realize that he wasn't wanting us to worship him. He was trying to teach us how to live. Right. And then as we kind of move and let go of all the religious stuff, we can come to find out more about Jesus. And that's where I, I'm so thrilled that you can bring us the Buddhist perspective on who you guys call Yeshua ben Joseph. That is ben Jesus, Yo son of Joseph. Translated right. loosely, right? Right. So um, so this is, this is very old um, Buddhist records about a man called Yeshua ben Joseph. Um, and I'm just going to tell the story of Yeshua ben Yosef, and it's a wonderful story that's been added to the Kashi record and the, the canon um, that the universe creates. And um, this story is a Buddhist story. It's been documented in many scrolls and traditions outside of Buddhism as well to further back up. And it's actually backed up by the government of India themselves. Um, that back up all these facts in all these scrolls and different texts. So if you want any evidence that this person ever existed in history, there is physical evidence, but it's not what you've been told. Um, and it's and not where you've been told either. It's not you where guys have, <laughs> you guys have pr better documentation, historical yeah. documentation than we actually have in the West, don't you? Mm -hmm. So the thing, the thing is, um, there's a there's a very old tradition. So Buddhism, um, you know, just a, some background for people who are not familiar with me, just really quick. So obviously I'm Von Galt, and um, I'm an author, and I write a lot of books and things that I love. Um, and writing is my meditation. Um, aside from that, I'm a normal working mom of two children, and I have a wonderful husband. Um, and I write as meditation to kind of get away from my IT job in the daytime. And one of the things that I love to write about is metaphysics. And so um, I, I learned about consciousness and 
you know, Mandela effects manifesting your parallel reality um, with my Merkaba through studying um, Tibetan Buddhism growing up. And for the last 20 years, I have um, been following the works of prominent monks like the Dalai Lama and many other prominent um, Buddhist monks and nuns that would go out and participate in academia in the West and around the world to um, find out if you know, the stuff that we've been studying for almost 2,600 years actually will match up to the science. You know, how much of it is still accurate? How much of it needs to kind of get clarification on? Um, because it's all it's all about science-based living. And, and Buddha says, test this out to find for yourself so that you know firsthand how your consciousness creates reality. So all those quotes of what you perceive, you receive, all of that, it's all about talking about your Mandela effects and parallel realities. And so um, so I spent the last 20 years studying all the different science in mindfulness, consciousness, meditation, um, metaphysics. And in the last 20 years, all that research that I just found fascinating for myself and fun to see any new material that comes through, it actually birthed out a book, which I wrote and, and published. And the book is called Buddhist Mandalas, Explore Parallel Realities with Sacred Geometry, which actually, you guys, um, Amazon allows me to give away uh, my books for free for five days during the promo to kind of help the rankings in their bookshelf. And that book right now is free it's set for free um, until July 1st, 2020. So go to Amazon, type in my name, Von Galt, V-O-N-G-A-L-T, um, and pull up that book. And the ebook version is free as a download once you get into your account. Um, if another way is to just click on the hyperlink for my name, and that will pull up my full author page, and you can find um, and get that book that way as well. Okay, so, that's that's down below, you guys. It says Von Von's author page. If you click that link, that'll take them right to the Amazon page, right? Like, exactly. So okay. just go there. The ebook is free. The print book is beautiful. Um, you it know, is. and forgive me for any kind of con like a you know conversion transcription with create space that the tool does not always work beautifully when they translate between platforms so um but most of it is 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 really good so um so it is free right now so don't miss out and studying sacred geometry will help rewire your consciousness to a fifth dimensional level so um so now let's get into the fifth dimensional talk okay right. so uh, i'm going to tell a story that comes from the Buddhist canon that we don't tell very much to people in the West because, you know, we respect, one of the things is we respect everyone's chosen incarnation and the pre-life plan because we really believe in soul planning and reincarnation. And everybody in the Buddhist perspective believes that um, they plan certain elements for their own spiritual growth and for their own soul's amusement. So we respect that. Um, and so many Buddhists do not talk about Yeshua ben Yosef because it is such a controversial figure um, in the religious traditions of the West. But for us, he is one of the many students that we have in our mon monastic systems that have um, been very successful in reaching Nirvana and Buddhahood. So one of many. Mm -hmm. So um, in my book, Buddhist Mandalas, um, they typically have uh, the master teacher um, or what you call Buddha. They typically have two halos, one halo around the head and one halo around the body. And what you would call your aura field or your chakras or whatever fields or energy words you want to use but we call them your buddhist mandala in hinduism they call it your sri yantra in zen they would call it your yin yang you know and just on and on um and all that science to prove that is documented in that book buddhist mandalas so um so what this basically is is um it is your merkaba okay it's your merkaba so even merkaba translated is mer means light ka means spirit and ba 
means body. So your Merkaba is your spirit's light body. And everyone has a unique one, just like snowflakes. Everyone's Merkaba is unique. And you can go to a website. Um, it's actually, it's called Sound Made Visible, soundmadevisible.com. And that website um, has a, you know, they did a lot of sound research for medicine to try to find sound healing for medicine and other things. And now they offer it to the public where you can record your voice uh, or anybody can record the voice or a dog's voice or anything, send it to the website. And I think it's $150 for um, the printout and they will print out what your Merkaba looks like. So you can actually see what your Merkaba looks like. And the very advanced souls that are very high consciousness, very high energy, um, very spiritually evolved, have very dense, very complex and beautiful Merkabas. The younger souls who are lower frequency, it's not so much. So, you know, you can actually see this scientifically that you have a Merkaba, all right? So I preface that to get into Yeshua ben Yosef, okay? So in the Buddhist tradition, we have these monasteries. And these monasteries are actually universities. And for a very long time, and still today, um, the Buddhist monasteries offer free education to anybody who wants to learn metaphysics, to learn, you know, to read and write, anything at all, um, to learn energy healing through the the dankas and any other modality that's offered to learn kung fu, anything. So um, these Buddhist institutions, you know, all of these students are what they call scribes, and they typically write down their knowledge that they get from the tradition, and there's a lot that's added into the canon. And we keep records of all the students because it is a school, okay? Um, and one of the records, um, is from the Hemis Monastery in Hemis, Ladakh, India. It documents a student named Yeshua Ben Yosef. So Yeshua is spelled Y-E-S-H-U-A-H, Yeshua, Ben, B-E-N, and then Yosef, Y-O-S-E-F. In the West, you would translate that as Jesus Benjamin Joseph. But his original name is Yeshua Ben Yosef. And in our documents, um, we have this student that was enrolled from 13 to 28 years old. He was enrolled in a monastery, okay? And that happens to be when he disappeared, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't have any record of that in your, in your books. Well, I mean, I think uh, he's 12 years old, and then, like, he's 30. You know, it's like a big gap in his life. So now we're filling in that gap, you guys. This is yeah. cool. And you know what? It actually, to me, my understanding of Jesus now, this great master teacher, healer, person that really had it figured out and could do all these miracles, this, to me, um, explains why. I mean, he went and trained. He didn't just, you know, bam, he's, um, you know, just magic all of a sudden. This is something that he was born to do that, but he actually, you know, it was a journey. It was a process. It was a process. A process we all can do, and that's the important yes. part of this whole yes. thing. Yes, yes. And, and telling the story, the real story of Yeshua ben Yosef shows how you can empower yourself within the matrix. So... Yeshua ben Yosef studied metaphysics and energy healing in the Hemis Monastery. Um, and then afterwards, as part of his training, because you always, spirituality, nobody owns spirituality, and Buddhists know this. Nobody owns it. It can't be boxed. It can't be owned. Um, and we just add to the canon. So as part of his Buddhist studies, he went off into northern um, China, and he studied with Zen Buddhism in that monastery, which is what you know now as Mahayana Tibetan Buddhism. So the scrolls up there have record of his attendance, studying with the monks of Tibetan Buddhism in China. And then afterwards, he went back down and he studied with the yogis of India um, and studied Hinduism. Um, to kind of further understand the matrix and understand how to be a conscious creator, because um, everybody has nuggets of of good good stuff. So he studied, and people in the the yogis in the in the area loved him. They gave him a nickname, and his nickname was Sananda. And Sananda is 
referred many times in Hindu texts as well about this energy healer from the West. And then after he studied with the yogis of India, he, um, he studied with the indigenous Muslims in the area. Um, and this is before Muhammad you know, came through and um, took the indigenous beliefs of the, the Muslims there at the time and they put it in the Quran. In the Quran. Send me, ask daddy. Well, ask daddy. I'm sorry. My mom job walked in. <laughs> it's cool. I, you need... I, I tell people all the time. They don't believe me. I'm like, I'm real. <laughs> um, we, any... we completely understand. I can hear my, my grandson in the background. Too, so. <laughs> it's life and it's live. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so, so let me interject while, while we're at this sort of break here. So is this something that's like kind of common knowledge to the East and people just like, hey, don't, don't bring that up. They really get upset if you start talking about this stuff. But like Nobody most people wants know. any daggers. They don't right, want any. Right, like, right. Oh. I, could, I get it. Yeah, I totally you know, get it. I totally you know, get it. You, you, I don't blame nobody them. Nobody wants any. They, right. they, don't, they don't want fights. Let's just they get along. Why, yeah, why bring that up? Get along. Bring that like, up. <laughs> you, you explore parallel realities the way you want. I'll explore it the way you want. You know, if yeah. well, we're good. Yeah. So they just don't talk about it. As right. But it's interesting to know. And, you know, I'm such a fan of Jesus. I want to know all about it. That's why when you I found know out about whole life. Yeah, the Nag Hammadi text came out and people were like, that's not in the body. I'm like, uh, Bible. And I'm like, but Jesus wrote it. I want to see what it says. You know what I mean? So, yeah. But, you know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So um, so he studied with the indigenous Muslims in the area and they loved him because, you know, he was offering energy healing and he was a great guy that, um they gave him a nickname, and his nickname was Isa, I-S-S-A, Isa. And Isa was mentioned in the Quran 33 times. So there's more record of Yeshua, 33, yeah, yeah, yeah. master number. Um, so, you know, because he's a ascended master teacher who mastered the, the illusion of the matrix. So anyways, he was mentioned in the Quran 33 times. And so there's another record in another tradition of the same man. And then, um, and the other thing I want to note too for this is prior to his birth, um, we have the tradition of toku children in, um, in Buddhism. And it's, we just kind of wrap all ancient souls, old souls from the spirit world, um, souls who are what, you know, Dolores Cannon in her, um, hypnosis and books called mm -hmm. star seeds crystals indigos we just kind of wrap it all in ancient mm -hmm. time we call them toku children and they're basically very very advanced souls that have incarnated into earth for their own reasons and so when buddhism when we go to um geolocate like the new dalai lama or the new karmapa or the new um, person is going to take on that leadership position within the different monasteries and the traditions. Um, the monks and nuns would go into gamma brainwave meditation, like high meditation. And when they go in there, they they all try to geolocate this soul that is this high frequency soul that is meant to come in and help carry on the torch of their their monastery. OK, so they they go to meditation and to try to geolocate in the world or in Asia. Where is where is this soul going to be born? Where is this soul? And when they all geolocate that energy on the map, um, then they go there and they meet the child and um, and they ask the child questions that only the child would know. So um, let me give you an example. Like in current and it still happens today. Um, the prince of Bhutan, Prince Jigme. He's a, he's a toddler. Um, he is a toku child. Uh, they, they recognize something's happening with the royal family. And when he was about two or three, when he started talking, they took him to a very, very old um, Buddhist temple that uh, a lot of the ancient stuff has already fallen apart. But this kid, they brought him over. He walked straight to this old area of the Buddhist temple, sat down and said, this is where my class was. And nobody told him, but that is exactly where they would teach the students back in ancient times. 
And then he would walk and he said, this is what my teacher taught me. And that is exactly where they did those instructions. So this two-year-old knew inside and out of this old temple that was like 700 years old and in decay because he had memory of it. So, um, so you know, this, these, are, these are toku children. We wrap it all into one thing. So the reason why I bring up the toku children story is because um, the Buddhist monks had this G located this toku child in the West and they went to his parents to pay him a visit because he was a ancient so star seed. Okay. Um, that have had many experiences in not only earth, but in many other lifetimes as well. So, um, so they went to visit his, his parents in the middle East, what you would call the wise men. And they told his parents, when they're old enough, bring him to school. And we'll, we'll teach him everything about awakening, ascension, and returning to the Lord, returning to the Father, returning to Nirvana, because that's the material that is available about this whole holographic game that souls play. And so when his parents, uh, when he became about 13, his parents took him to uh, the Hemis Monastery for his formal education in energy healing, in consciousness, and in metaphysics. Um, after his education was done, he returned home. And um, he returned to the Middle East where he was originally from. And um, that's when all the Bible stories start. So I'm not gonna go through the Bible stories. Everybody's heard, learned all of them. And you can probably regurgitate them to me. But that's the Bible stories. But on the upcoming crucifixion, as it was really heating up, Buddhist monks went and found him and tried to, to get him to come back to his childhood monastery because it's, it's getting really dangerous for you to be here, son. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> you got to go back. You got to get, you got to leave. Um, but after his meditation, he decided to stick it out and stay with his friends and the woman that he loved. So. Was that Mag Magdalene then, right? Is that, is that who it was in your tradition? Magdalene? Uh, we in don't have, records? we don't have a name of who oh, he oh, married, okay. but he married the person that he met there and they stayed together. Okay. So did he survive the crucifixion or did he have someone take his place or I've heard a few different views on this and there's evidence that I see that can support, you know, that could be supportive of several things. So what do you guys say about it or what, what does the tradition say? So the records are fuzzy on this because there's not clear in Buddhist records. If Yeshua, it was really Yeshua or if it was a body double. Mm -hmm. But it is clear that whoever had it, they nursed him back to health. Oh, okay. Okay. Because so there's the twin a lot of people know of as the twin. And uh, a good friend of mine, Joseph Reyna, has done uh, where it almost looks as if they, he's, the twin took his place and swapped. And then, of course, they did. They revived him back to health or, or something. Yeah. See, that part is very fuzzy in, in the document. So we're not really sure. But somebody got crucified. All right. Um. Yeshua, he did return. He gave up on the Middle East, and he re returned back to his childhood monastery, kind of retreated back to the sanctuary of his childhood monastery. Kind of, I went through this huge episode. I need some peace. <laughs> so he went back to his, his childhood monastery, and the Buddhist records show that he lived in Kashmir until he was about 120 years old. That's the records. Now, mm -hmm. that record could also be a cover because they are also records that show that he left to tour Egypt and Europe. Okay, so that good part. <laughs> It's so nobody okay so I, I i remember watching a i don't know discover channel or something where they were like we found this one grave most of the 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 burials are from north to south but we found one with a cross on it that was east to west and they thought in the special on discover channel or something that it could be uh where jesus was laid to rest uh ultimately and it was like it was in the far in the far east i can't remember where but yeah India or somewhere yeah east. most of this happened in, in india so yeah, so the, that part is not very clear. I mean, the stuff that is very, very clear is when he enrolled in school. Right, because of the records. Because of the records of all yeah. the students that ever came through. 
That's very and, cool. and most of the scrolls in the monasteries are just records of students that went through <laughs> enrollment records. Wow. <laughs> so what you do outside of school in your personal life gets a little <laughs> bit fuzzy. <laughs> but we know he existed and we know he went because he shows up in the Hindu text. He shows up in the Quran. So he shows up in Tibetan Buddhism um, text as well. Um, Any word about him um, doing the mystery schools in Egypt at the, you know, at the pyramids and all of that? I, I thought that, yeah, that there. falls off of our record. We know that he 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 toured a little bit, so that falls oh, okay. off our record. So we don't okay. know that um, on his extracurricular activities. <laughs> right. So, um, so anyways, his legacy was so memorable, memorable, mm-hmm. that the Middle East politicians or Middle East priesthood. I call them politicians, <laughs> practically. But the, mid, the Middle Eastern priesthood in his area of his original hometown, they fabricated Yeshua's story with ancient mythology. Um, they also removed knowledge about the awakening process, the ascension process back to Nirvana and to Buddhahood, um, and about Christ, how to achieve Christ consciousness, okay? All the basic foundations of Buddhism when you get into the advanced studies. And in order to stay in power, they include concepts about separatism, fear, coercion, bribery, all these things into the canon. Um, And so the only way that you reach salvation is through the church or through, you know, somebody else. So, you you know, it never really empowers you. So that's what they did with the material. What Which is all- understandable because somebody is actually asking, like, uh, basically, why why was it hidden? And I believe it was hidden in the West because it went against their whole control plan of controlling the people. They were just using Jesus to control the people, not to really get his message out. At least that's what I feel about it. Because yeah, it's they all took about out the basic principles about awakening, ascension, and how you can, um, you know manifest a better reality for yourself that how you can change consciousness how you can use consciousness to change reality all the stuff that we talk about and it said said, come to us we'll take care of you (laughs) yes we are your only gateway right (laughs) you don't have any powers you have no ability to create anything so anyways i don't really want to go down that route because that's this is the i I would like to say I, I would like to say that things haven't really changed much since Jesus was here, if you really think about it. I mean, even at his time, he called those the religious leaders hypocrites for doing what they're doing now. So even if he was alive today, I think he'd still be hanging out with me and calling them hypocrites. I don't know. That's just <laughs> Probably. Probably. Well, you know, um, I mean, like the Vatican is one of the biggest ones, and they know about this because they... Oh, they um, They've got all those records underneath there most of the records but um you can't really go and do an aerial view for a long time they have this ban that you can't do an aerial view of the vatican because if you do do that and actually a lot of people have done it anyways and post it on the internet if you look up the aerial view of the vatican um it is designed around the wheel of dharma which is the buddhist symbol for your wheel of dharma which is your journey um through the life experience back home through nirvana mm. so it is designed based off the wheel of dharma it's right there in front of you but you just you know there's like whoa it's not to let people see so anyways hidden in plain sight like hidden everything in else. plain sight, <laughs> in plain sight. <laughs> thanks for telling me that i'm going to check out some satellite images of it yes cool. yes look up the wheel of dharma in buddhism and look up the aerial view of the vatican it's the same it's the same Okay. So, anyways, um, you know the pineal gland, and you know all that kind of stuff about mm-hmm. awakening your um, your third eye. That's I've definitely all seen there the pine too. cone uh, artwork that they have there. I mean, they they clearly know about a lot of that stuff. Yeah, so it's it's yeah. very fascinating. It's very fascinating how you you know can kind of touch on the on the truth, but kind of not. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, but that's what um, the the Middle Eastern priesthood at Yeshua's time did. And what they also did further was they removed his Jewish lineage from his name. Okay, because names tell what culture you're from, what part of the world you're from, maybe kind of what status. They, names actually say a lot about somebody's origins. Mm. And the name 
Jesus doesn't really have much of an origin. It's like, where's that from? You know, and you, it, it's kind of fell out of somewhere. Well, his original name is Yeshua. Y-E-S-H-U-A-H. Yeshua. And then what they did was they get rid of the, the Y and put a J name. So Jeshua. But they still had the H, so you can still link it to Jewish, Judaism. So they're like, okay, let's cut the H off and make it Jesus. So instead of Yeshua, Jeshua, Jesus. I got gotcha. Okay. So now he has a made-up name that is not tied at all to his Jewish lineage. Um, and his real full name is Yeshua Ben Yosef, Y-O-S-E-F. So, which sounds like, and it's translated really as Jesus Benjamin Joseph, son gotcha. of Yosef. Right. So anyway, so the cha- the name changed, and that helped kind of remove that. And then they added this last name called Christ. And the Christ name is like, where's that lineage from? Where That just fell off the sky, too. Where did that the Christ come from? family, right? The Christ family. Where's the Christ family? Where's the Christ <laughs> right. family? What's the Christ? <laughs> well, they added last name, and there's no explanation. Nobody knows the origin of the Christ family except um, Buddhism. And um, Christ is a word for your Christ consciousness. It is your crystalline consciousness. Okay. It actually originates from uh, the word called um, the ancient word Christala, which is K R Y S T H L A, Christala, crystalline consciousness. And that is a word for, the, for a couple of zones or tones in semantics, which is ka, ra, a, sa, and la. And those are the seven sacred geometry tones of creation in your Merkaba. Wow. Okay. There it is. It's right all there. It's right there. It's right. The leads are right there in front of you. Jesus Christ. So your Merkaba, which is your spirit's light body, your sacred geometry, your Buddhist mandala, your Sri Yantra, you name it. All the things that all the traditions have been, all these symbols they've been, um, you know, bringing up that have all this knowledge is all talking about your Merkaba, your, your mandala. Which everybody can get on soundmadevisible.com. <laughs> I think it's so much fun. I love having fun with reality. So, anyways, it is your Merkaba. And when you have your awakening, and it's a process, when you have your awakening and you work on um, your ascension process and raising your energy and your level of consciousness, you perfect that Merkaba. Um, and like I said, in that website, Sound Made Visible, you can go and see how complex and how advanced your Merkaba is, because the more advanced spiritual people have more um, advanced Merkaba designs. And that Merkaba is um, the vessel in which your consciousness travels between multiverses and dimensions and different uh, universes. It just travels the cosmos in that Merkaba. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, um So Christ consciousness is short for your Merkaba, and it's a fifth dimensional energy that you can reach as well. So, um, I mean, and also in Islam, they shorten it to um, Hia, which means Allah, Allah inside you. God is inside everyone. Everyone is a little fractal of the universal one mind that lives inside everyone, sitting and waiting for you to have your awakening and ascension, so you can be a more conscious creator with the universe. What did I mess up in your uh, your your description? The H Mung, H Mung, Hey Mung. How do you pronounce oh, that? Oh, yeah, it's it's just called Mung. Oh, okay, okay. It's the Mung tribe of Northern Laos. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> so um. So. That's your, that's your Merkaba. So, and we know in science, the sulfagio hertz frequency, yeah. you know, like oot is 396 hertz, fa mm-hmm. is 639 hertz, re is 417 hertz, sol is 741, mi is 528, and la is 852. So, you know, the, I bring this up because sound makes matter. Mm-hmm. And Buddhist monks know 
that sound makes matter because they've been working with those big, you know, <laughs> instruments yeah. to and and their you know their chance to create certain frequency yeah. um, for energy healing, for healing, for levitation of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, um, so you know, that's the basic idea of that. So going back to Yeshua, so um, there's a shrine in India called the Rosa Ball Shrine in Kashmir, India. And um, it's Yeshua's tomb. And, you know, when he passed away, they buried him according to a Jewish tradition of of directions. And there's a rock carving of a man inside um, with crucifixion wounds on his feet. Okay. Um, Now, parts of Yeshua's family became Muslim. um, Mm -hmm. And the caretakers of Yeshua's tomb, um, the board of directors are made of Sunni Muslims, okay? But they but they know that they have this Jewish guy that's in the tomb, um, that they revere and love, and has been written 33 times in the Quran. Um, the, the thing is, is in Buddhism, you know, because he sticks out, he's a Westerner that sticks out in the, the tradition. <laughs> right. So kind of easy to kind of locate. Um, but, you know, he as many others in this tradition um, overcome the infinite game and decide to go through the final doorway. We went through Nirvana um, and he returned back to be reabsorbed. He let go of his ego identity to stop playing the, the game. And he, um, you know, got reabsorbed with the consciousness of the one mind or the, the oversoul or the Lord or the God, however you want to call it. Um, and so he ends, ends up in the ranks of, the first Buddha, Gautama, uh, or Siddhartha Gautama, Kuan Yin, Tara, Vishnu, Moses, and all these other avatars that went all the way up to Buddhahood, all the way up to like David R. Hawkins, um, the mental health doctor. So he he made it. He, he made it. He made it. So now, now I gotta interject here because you you don't have any you know the, the Buddhists don't have any dog in the race, so to speak, to push Christianity or the hero of Christianity in such a way. You have no reason to to talk about how he progressed through the whole thing, and he did make it to be this wonderful human being, you know. And and to me, that that really says a lot because you're not really pushing any agenda. You're like, yeah, we know about him. Yeah, he sticks out to us. He stood out. This Jesus really is this character that before the internet, before we had a global communication. Uh, system in place was able to become a, like almost a household name on every continent, mm, you know. Yeah, and that's pretty yeah. impressive. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. It was, it, it's really dense back then. It's really hard, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, people back then and people of this this area. I mean, Asia is pretty open minded. We're like, oh, okay, just what you're gonna do. This is the game you're playing. All right. Good right. luck to you. Right. You know, you're kind of, okay, because we right. know, you know, this is your incarnation and this is part of your journey. And, and if it's that's not what wrong. you're going to do, then right. I wish you the very doing. best. Oh, it didn't work out. It stung. Yeah. I'm, I hope you learned your lesson. Right. <laughs> so, so we're really easygoing about people's incarnations and we completely respect. That. That's why um, we don't have missionaries. You don't convert anybody to spirituality because spirituality is everything. <laughs> Right. It's, so right. it's, it's a holographic matrix that we exist in. So what is there to convert to? Right. <laughs> it's like converting to air. <laughs> right, right. It's almost like the idea that you need to convert somebody shows that you don't even really understand what's going on anyway, right? Yeah, you don't understand the <laughs> the wind. <laughs> right. So, so anyways, I, I don't want to go down, down that. Um, but um, yeah, we're respectful of everybody's incarnation. So we don't, you know. But that that ties in perfectly with what you were going to say about what we're here to do and how we're here to actually transform and bring this all about. Yes. So in in the the canon, there is a Buddhist prophecy. Now, remember the 2012 end of the cycle of polarity or separation and welcome in the new energy of unity consciousness. That was a prophecy that's been sitting around for a long time, for thousands of years. And we didn't know if it was going to real, be real or not or how it's going to happen. Right. So, and I will touch on that as well of how we got, got to where we are and where we're going. But that prophecy has come and we're like, okay, so it, it's real. Um, you know, because um, 
Buddhism is an offshoot of the Vedas of Hinduism, uh, which has been around, you know, they speculate 7,000 or even more than 26,000 years based on um, the information in the Vedas of Hinduism. And um, they speculate because a lot of the local people in Southeast Asia and in Asia, they have a lot of um, oral history that they talk to people and to keep the oral history of their culture um, around. And they have the oral history of um, this mega flood that wiped out a very advanced, very spiritual civilization in the Pacific Ocean that they call um, Lemuria. And the remnants of those people went in according to the Buddhist folklore, because oral tradition over time um, gets wrapped up into art history um, and gets wrapped up into becoming folklore. So, you know, we still keep it. And that's why in the, the monasteries, you'll see the artwork of these folklore. Um, and one of the artwork of this folklore um, is about the mega flood. And so the remnants of the mega flood, everybody who survived either got into boats and they went off to high ground or they went to the high ground where there is usually a megalith or pyramid in high ground because those are the remnants of their advanced spiritual civilization. And for my other book that I'm working on, I talked to a lot of elders and chiefs of different tribes of the Polynesian islands. Um, I was just following the Buddhist folklore of the mega flood of the Maria. And according to the folklore, there should be a pyramid or a megalith on the top of all these high mountainous areas in the Polynesian islands. And I went down every single island and I had a hundred percent accuracy that every single island had a pyramid or a megalith. A hundred percent accuracy on a Buddhist folklore about an ancient Lemurian civilization and the remnants of those you know, hang out in the Polynesian islands and Asia. And of course, it, the, the spiritual traditions go into the Buddhist folklore. So very interesting um, material for that. So the reason why I bring that up is we get into another folklore that goes into the fifth dimension. And the Buddhist folklore is what I like to call the X-Men of the fifth dimension. <laughs> Because we're going to start getting really sci-fi here because a lot of the advanced studies in Buddhism get really wi wild and sci-fi-ish. That's awesome. <laughs> so, um, so I call them the X-Men of the Fifth Dimension. But basically, the concept is this. Between 2010 to 2012, um, a lot of indigenous tribes, which Buddhists speculate, quote, quote, may have some links to Lemuria, um, they did their awakening ceremony. So you had the chiefs of the Easter Islands, you had chiefs of the Mayans, you had Native American chiefs, and of course you had Buddhism. And we all did awakening ceremonies in our own way. And the awakening ceremonies of 2012 was not our Armageddon that you would find out in the West because you're disconnected from the original root of the philosophy. Um, so you wouldn't know, but everybody else kept the tradition and the philosophy. So they knew some remnants. And so they waited a long time to close out an old energy of separation and welcome in a new energy of unity consciousness. And unity consciousness is a fifth dimensional energy. And in this fifth dimensional energy, as we get further into that parallel reality through shifting from one parallel version to another, as we get further and further into the higher energies, this is what you call your Mandela effects. Mm -hmm. um, because we're all just shifting <laughs> to better and better, hopefully, hopefully better and better versions as we get further into the parallel fifth dimension. And Earth is doing that as well. And these higher, denser energies, um, everything moves faster, time moves faster, um, things kind of manifest faster. You'll think something, your friend will actually call you the minute you think about it. You're like, oh, that's interesting. Um, you'll, want, you, you'll be working on something and then you'll get emails with, or things will come into your presence with exactly what you need next. These are the higher energies because everything is moving up. Um, and they found this in science with the Schumann resonance of Earth that there, and I studied 20 years of this, the science behind this, and I'm confident to say that something is happening with Earth. And what we know of is the Earth typically is 7.83 hertz. 
for a very long time. But then um, around 9-11, she went up to like 10 or 14. And then she's, you know, kind of creeped up a little bit here and there. But then after 2012, she started jumping. And even more recently, she started jumping to 60, 80, and just, just big, big leaps. And when she makes these big leaps, what's happening is it's like the analogy of sailing. When you're sailing, you're sailing the same exact way, thinking nothing else of it. But then the energy changes and the wind picks up and it's kind of slow at first. So you don't notice it. You're still doing the same thing in your life. But then all of a sudden you get this big whoosh and you're like, whoa, what happened? And you maybe get some, you know, vertigo, back aches, headaches, whatever. But the wind is picking up. And so you need to realize that the energy of the earth has changed. And so you just got to bring your sails up and you got to navigate um, appropriately and a couple changes in knots will take you to a completely different part of the earth and have a completely different experience. And that is what's happening is that, um, and it's been happening since the late nineties, but it is accelerating because she's taking her leaps. She's taking these big jumps further into the fifth dimension. And what's happening is all the gunk on the bottom of the sea, all your dirty deeds, all your you know, things you sweeped underneath the, um, the rug, all of the things you don't want anybody to see, all your the inner demons, all that stuff is coming up for you to resolve so you can get to the good stuff and not create the bad stuff that is coming up for you to resolve in your life. It's your opportunity to clear out those dense gunk. Um, and they found this in the scientific research when they were looking at the Schumann resonance that, um, you know, whenever she has her spikes, peoples like there was major wars and there were major renaissance every single time so what happens is when earth has her spikes and she raises her energy um what you are is going to come out so if you're really negative really manipulative you have a lot of dense issues repressed issues that's going to come up for you to work on and it's going to come up harder and harder so that you can finally work on it and then learn from it and then start building out of abundance. If you're already abundant and you've already, um, you're a very positive person and you always see silver linings and you already worked on your repressed issues, there's no gunk to come up and, and transmute. So, so is this gonna bring up more of what you are, which is more opportunity, more abundance. So if you're a creative person, you're just going to um, just beam all this creativity and opportunities. And so you're gonna have a, a different issue, which is how do I balance all this stuff? So that's what's going on right now is we're going further into the fifth dimension. So I'm going to return to Yeshua's story. The Buddhist because prophet- that's, that, that really goes that really says a lot about why we do have really completely different experiences, though, where, where somebody's like, oh, I had the roughest time. I had a horrible headache. I couldn't get out of bed or whatever, where the other person's like, oh, it just felt like I was so excited all weekend. I don't know what. What the deal yeah, was? So I it's worked like, out. I did right, all these right. things. I did a whole gardening thing. <laughs> so, so, so depending on how those energies come in, it can really affect us in different ways. And if we have something that needs to sort of get brought up and dealt with, then we might not, it might not feel all that great to us. Although ultimately it is a good thing because we're purging, aren't we? We're, we're like getting yes, it out. We're cleaning out. It's like the analogy of um, a stream, you know, when the stream is changing its currents to much faster currents. Mm -hmm. All the gunk on the bottom, the sediments on the bottom of the stream will come up every single one of them. And eventually they all come up and get transmuted. um, And then the stream is clean and you can see all the way to the bottom. Mm -hmm. It's pristine. And that's, you need that, you know, the universe is trying to clean up your life. It needs you to do your work so that it can be a nice clean stream of just, positivity and abundance and the fifth dimension is all about that because it's just going to amplify what you are so you don't if everything's manifesting faster you don't want to create um your worst fears no 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 okay so if you're afraid of you know demons devils my tax evasion is going to come after me guess what it (laughs) is because you got to resolve that you got to address that so the vatican is having a great time with um you know things roosting um all the the exorcism that's coming up because people are coming into their awakening and ascension and they have these abilities to create out of their worst fears. So it, right. they are creating these experiences. So everything's coming back to roost. They're using the tools against themselves instead of for themselves. 
Yes. And you can use it negatively or you can do the opposite and use the tools to create abundance and love and positivity and joy in your life, however you want it, whatever that is to you. So, you know, there's like the yin yang, there's two ways to see it and use it. So um, anyways, the, the prophecy of the people of the fifth dimension, they they worked on their issues, and as these higher energies get to take us further and further into the fifth dimension, they will start having more awakenings and more of the deeper awakenings because it's a process, and they will start working on their ascension up to um, the higher levels of the hood or Bodhisattva hood or, you know, finally decide to be, d be done with the game, whatever they want to do. But they're going to raise their energy up to these higher dimensions. And as you work on this work, and Buddhism knows this, as you work on this work of ascension and awakening um, and, you know, changing your reality within your consciousness, your six senses will start coming into play. And many people are born with six senses. Some may know of it. Some maybe have a tingling of it. Um, it's just like being born... Some people are born to run faster than others. Some people are born to jump higher than others. Okay, it doesn't mean that you're better or, or worse. If you have it, don't have it. It just means that you have this ability that you brought with you into this incarnation. But as, because these are spiritual skill sets, and as you work on your spirituality and you perfect your Merkaba, your Christ consciousness, your six senses will start activating and in these higher energies, they will amplify. Remember, Earth is an amplifier. Mm -hmm. So you need to work on your fear that these are the works of the devil because um, you're going to create your worst experience. So you need to understand them so you can transmute them and live with your abilities positively. And that's how creating your own reality works, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So going into the prophecy, the Buddhist prophecy that, you know, we waited a long time for 2012 and, well, that did happen. So, oh, right. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> so we're like, huh, how much of this is actually true? <laughs> right. <laughs> Which is the, the thing I always do. Like, how much of this Lemurian folklore is actually true? <laughs> so, right. Anyways, um, the prophecy is that the people of the fifth dimension are higher frequency resonant people. Um, Dr. Hawkins called them an offshoot of humanity and he called them homo spiritus. <laughs> <laughs> it's very highly evolved, very spiritual societies. They all have activated six senses. They all know about the infinite game and how to be a conscious creators. Um, you know, and they, they're using this energy and creating um, abundance and a beautiful, what you would call heaven on earth or golden age of humanity. And because they are such advanced level of mer Merkabas and consciousness, they are at the frequency to communicate with other beings of higher dimensions of the multiverse of different universes that exist in higher energy into the fifth dimension. So we become intergalactic and interstellar. Um, the reason why we're not is because many of, of humanity is not at that frequency yet. So you have people of the fifth dimension that all have six senses that are highly activated and honed in on. So it's kind of like the all-star of the Olympics, but you have a whole world like this in the in the fifth dimension. That's why I call them the X-Men of the fifth dimension. <laughs> <laughs> um, I told you we're going to go into sci-fi. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So the X-Men of the fifth dimension. One of the things that the prophecy does, or the belief is that um, they, them, this globe with this crystalline consciousness, this Christ fifth dimensional consciousness. In Buddhism, the return of Maitreya, which is our word for Christ as well, or the return of Christ is not the return of a man. I just explained the definition of what the word Christ mm -hmm. is a consciousness. It's the return of Christ consciousness within humanity. Mm -hmm. They all have reached they're awakening ascension and they reach up to the fifth dimensional level of Christ, of crystalline consciousness where their Merkaba is at that high 5D level. In my book, Buddhist Mandalas, um, you know, Metatron's Cube goes over that crystalline consciousness of activating your Merkaba to that level. So it's the return of Christ consciousness. And one of the things that these 
quote, quote, X-Men of the fifth dimension do is with all of their six senses, whether they're flying or levitating or, you know, using teleportation to get there, how, whatever that they do, they go to the, um, the tomb of Yeshua and they pay their respects. And that completes the story of Yeshua Ben Yosef. That's awesome. Yeah, he's my hero, and, and like, and I don't have a problem with it because I've already sort of taken all the you know deep religious. I've t- taken all the religion from what he actually said, and I've read the Bible dozens of times because I've come across something like, wait a minute, did Jesus ever tell us to worship him? So then I read the whole Bible again, or at least the New Testament, if it was relating with Jesus. I'm like, wait, he never said that. Like, wouldn't he have said that if he wanted us to do it? And then, you know, I did the same thing with, like, uh, uh, him being our, like, sort of blood sacrifice for our sins. I'm like, well, surely he would have said that if that's how it works. Like, he just takes it all on himself, you know, like the church teaches or whatever. And I couldn't find anything like that. The closest thing was him doing communion and say, he said, you know, do this in remembrance of me. But he never said. They asked him how to get to heaven. He'd say something like, sell everything you have and follow me. You know, I'll show you how to do it. You know, it was. I'll show you how to have your awakening and your ascension and <laughs> right. be 5D. I'll show you how to be right. conscious. Now I'm going to do it all for you and you don't have to do anything. You just sit back and relax. No, it was like. You got to you know, do the work. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Come gotta, follow me. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll show you how to to get there you know yeah. yeah not everybody can go into the monastic schools <laughs> not a, <laughs> you, know, a, you know i get it i get it so um but yeah exactly so that's the story of yeshua ben yosef you know the story of him till 12 from the bible now you know the story through multiple religious canon of this yeah. figure that existed um from 13 to 28 and then you have the the Bible stories that to pick up from a time frame until the crucifixion. And now you heard from the crucifixion until death. Now That's you have awesome. the full story. That's awesome. Yeah. So it's all about empowering yourself and getting to that higher energy and really having a good experience and creating a life of joy and wonder for yourself and for the people that you love. That's Absolutely. really what it's all about. We're souls having a human experience. And get that. We're souls having a human experience. So we get caught up in our own third dimensional games and we get so caught up in our stories and our roles that we forget that we're souls having a human experience. And you can stop playing these games anytime you want. You can play other games. There's a lot of different games and puzzles in the game board. You don't have to play every single, you know, shooting robbery killing Mm. game out there you can play the fun other you know positive games too so there's there's a lot of choices out there and and none of it is right or wrong it's just what do you what do you find um entertaining amusing so and the other thing that people forget is that the the universal one mind um that over so is inside everyone everyone yeah. Okay, so um, you can acknowledge it and create from within it, or you cannot acknowledge it and continue to spin your wheels. You know, I'd like a smooth ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like a smooth and, ride. And that's the beauty of it. It's like uh, where everything else, there's like class and, you know, you know, you have to have so much money to have access to this. It's like the one thing that is so even across the playing field. It doesn't matter how much money you have. That connection with the divine is freely available to every single person in equal amounts. And it's really up to you whether you want to tap into it or not. And there's Mm -hmm. nothing holding us back. And that's the beauty of this whole thing. That's why I think Jesus said it's, it's like easier for, you know, a a rich man to go through an eye of a needle because he's got all this other stuff he's concerned with that. Why, why worry about his spiritual life when he's like sipping our martinis on the beach? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because you understand the only thing you take with you is your experiences and you know, your spiritual involvement, like your Merkaba, like, because your Merkaba, here's, here's the thing, your Merkaba is your access to multiple realities, Mm -hmm. um, to explore the multiverse and to, um, many, many more other games within, um, the infinite game. So when you go to the spirit world, if you don't want to get reabsorbed quite yet, with the mm-hmm. infinite void of the oversoul, um, then you can work with your life planner like myself. Hi. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Am I boring life planner? I'm like, well, what do you want to experience? What kind of excursions do you want to do? Okay. You want to do Earth again? No. Oh, okay. you want to be in a drama then? Okay, blue people. All right, all right. <laughs> well, what do you want to do in that society? What kind of excursions do you want? Okay, you want to be an explorer? Okay, you know, whatever. So um, and that's really that's really what souls do in the spirit world is they go through the Akasha record and they read all these wonderful stories of like, okay, let's see how Yeshua... Ben Yosef, you know, how, what was his life? Oh, okay, okay, let me read Kuan Yin's story. Oh, I like that too. Okay, okay, uh, let me read Buddha's story. Okay, let me read Moses' story. Okay, all right. I think I got an idea um, on how I want to transmute a dense reality um, and help people out and kind of work on, you know, this and that. So those are the journeys, but not everybody you know, incarnates to do that. Some people incarnate to just have fun and experience, um, you know, what a planet can offer, what a reality can offer. Just the regular old 3D life with a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I want to know. I don't want to wake up anybody. I just want to go to my job at McDonald's or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Which is okay. I'm not downing anybody. It's okay. My my little, yeah, my, my, uh, I have a family member and her joy of life is just to be able to have a roof in her, you know, just to have a, fun roommates that she loves her company have a nice boyfriend and then smoke a bowl every day (laughs) (laughs) and that's her joy that's her joy she's happy and content as a clam and that's (laughs) fine she's not interested in getting her master's degree or writing books or or awakening people she's just like i'm just gonna you know uh, this is how i want to play the matrix and i'm having fun and that's what she wants and that's perfectly fine um so not everybody's happiness is the same so there, you know, there's a lot of different games in the puzzle piece, but we're going to get let's switch gears and talk about star seeds because there's a lot of star seeds that come into this reality, and um, and like I, I already explained earlier, what Toku children are in Buddhism, it's just a mm-hmm. very ancient term for the new terms that are very common in a space that Dolores Cannon popularized, which is star seeds, indigo. Um, crystal children, all that, you know, we wrap it all in the same as Toku children. And basically, um, I'm going to kind of give some, some examples of what is going on right now. So a lot of ancient, very advanced souls are incarnating on earth right now to help earth ascend into the fifth dimension, further into the fifth dimension. Um, and meditation research has already proven this, that 1% of humanity in these higher energies, these higher gamma wave frequencies, will affect 99% of the population positively. So the 99% are trying to figure out the 3D problems because for whatever reason, they're compelled to work it out because of that 1% of humanity that's, you know, meditating and trying to, you know, be positive and trying to build the fifth dimension, trying to get out of the way of everybody else so that, um, you know, when everybody else figures out their 3D issues, there's stuff that's been built. And they're like, oh, what's, thank you for making this. I'm really enjoying this sanctuary. I really needed that. You know, it's like, you're welcome. So nobody's judging. It, you know, everybody's playing their part in the puzzle and they're putting it together. And, you know, it's, it's, it's like going into the fifth dimension is very much like giving birth. It's messy and it's scary at the same time. Um, so, I mean, you can study all you want and you go to your Lamaze class and prepare all you want, which is what we are doing in this community. We're preparing, we're, you know, you know, meditating, we're doing all these things, but then you go through the actual process and it's still kind of, you know, painful and stress, a little bit of anxiety. So it's much like birth that we're going through and it's a process. You've got to go down the canal. So, um, so what I get is one of the things that I do is I do quantum healing hypnosis technique, which is a hypnotherapy developed by Dolores Cannon. Um, and she spent 40 years or so perfecting this and writing a lot of books, which are wonderful. And um, I came across her work when I was stu- in the 20 years of studying um, different metaphysical research in the West. Um, I came across her work as a energy healing modality. And I'm familiar with the stuff in the East that was created by many monks. Um, but in the West, there were new modalities, and I researched her modality, and I loved her modality, so I became a practitioner of QHHT here in the Seattle area. Now, the thing is, is that um, I get 
clients that reach out to me and I would do a session and what I continually get are toku people. I can that's all I ever get. So one client after another I'm talking to the oversell inside my my clients talking out about their journey, what what is their issue with their wheel of dharma. So it provides me the opportunity to talk about all these metaphysical topics in Buddhism and actually apply it. Um, you know, so I love that. So I talked to the oversoul about, you know, what is this client's, you know, what are their abundance blocks that's holding down their energy to their awakening or further into their awakening? What can they do to help get deeper into their awakening and their ascension? And so we go over um, those issues. And then what's always revealed typically is their life, their other lives as star seeds um, in the spirit you know, beings in the spirit world and what their job was and why they came here at this time and what they came here to do during the ascension process of Earth. Um, or they were a star seed where they were a um, alien soul from another galaxy or universe. And they came into this incarnation at this time to help change the game from within the game. Okay, because um, the prime directive is a real thing. You can't just... Uh, boss people around and change it for them because the universe is not going to tell you what to do or how to do it because otherwise there will be no point creating you if it's just going to make decisions for you. It's no fun for the universe because it wants to see you grow and experience um, itself through your, your firsthand experience and your joys and your triumphs. So it just waits and, and waits for you to get your awakening and ascension and, and kind of work work through these these steps. So these star seeds typically come in, and this is what is revealed in the sessions. And I'll give you a couple examples of what um, their fifth dimensional job is and kind of how this all translates, okay? And you probably have a couple of, quite a bit of these stories in BQH, I think that you do. Right. Okay, so I'll tell you a couple, and they're, they're starting to sound a lot alike, all right? So um, my star seed clients um they typically like like i said they're ambassadors to other alien planets okay they, they sent one of their own to incarnate on earth to help with ascension and awakening and when earth people get to the higher frequencies um into the fifth dimension they're going to finally get to the level where they can communicate and see and communicate with these other beings that are already there all right, we kind of have to get there. And when we finally get there, um, one of them that incarnated as one of us is going to be the ambassador. So this is how they become the ambassadors. Um, so I had a client who reached out to me and said, I have this weird dialect. It sounds like gibberish. I've been saying it my whole life. I think it's a light language. Um, and they come from a very religious background. So they just kind of push it aside. But it's really coming up heavy at this time. They don't know why, because of higher energies. And um, what is revealed is that there are star seed, and this foreign light language, this alien dialect, is actually a real alien language. And when they they need to have their awakening and ascension to get to the fifth dimension, and when they get to the fifth dimension with all the people of the fifth dimension, when we make contact with that specific alien species this person this human person that's been speaking this weird alien dialect that sounds like gibberish is actually the translator who's going to communicate between the earth people and that alien um, civilization because they know the language okay so that's one example and so she's like oh okay so one of the recommendations is to write this down into your diary or book so that it's documented in case it doesn't happen in your lifetime there'll be record for your descendants to pull it up grandma wrote this light language and i think it pertains to this specific alien species so there's one of the one of the, the examples another example is um a lot of them come in with kind of what I call caretaker jobs. So I'll give you an example of another client that came in for QHHT. And she's always already awakened and a very um, old soul. And she said, okay, so I know I'm a star seed, 
I've had some weird nuances. I've had some um, weird kind of alien type of episodes. But um, I really need direction in um, in my life in terms of what can I do um, with my business. And so what was revealed to her was obviously her star sea origins and the oversoul gave very, very good recommendations. So what this person and her husband did is they bought at a very affordable price, this five acre property uh, north of where I live here in Seattle. And what is very special about this property that was revealed because, you know, they think it's really, really high energy and it's a healing place and they love it. Um, but what is revealed is that the Oversoul said that there is a cavern of 15 feet tall um, crystals, 100 feet below their property, a very huge crystal cavern that's healing. That's why you feel that healing. So everybody always comes to your house and wants to hang out in your yard because it's a healing space. And all of those fairy rings, because on this property is a lot of dense woods, uh, all around the property, you will see um, blue mushrooms that form in a perfect circle. And that's what they call fairy rings or white flowers that grow in a perfect circle. And so there are fairy rings that are all over the property. And the other thing that's interesting about the property is as you walk through the nature of the property, the trail that they made, you will see trees and branches that form in a circle like a vortex, okay? And they just kind of grow around the energy in the circle all around the property. Um, and it's in Washington. I'm not gonna tell you yet because they're working on building it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, 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 it's funny because they, they were asking, they're like, what is it about this property? We noticed all these weird nuances and we swear we heard Bigfoot um, growling or something. And we were, you know, when we were out in the woods one time and they were like, what is the deal with this property? And this is what it's revealed about this property. And the other thing that's revealed about this property is that Bigfoot does go through their property. <laughs> so... But Bigfoot is a um, fifth dimensional being. That's why you typically don't see them because they're invisible to the third dimensional eye. So, but they are 5D. So sometimes they tune in when he comes through. And what is revealed to them is that they are star seeds. They incarnated here on earth at the time of the ascension into the fifth dimension because they are to take care of this special property and be good stewards of the earth and take care of it so it doesn't get damaged or over um, built and destroyed by you know population expansion in that area because it's, it's a very special property so they there need to be good caretakers and protect the crystal cavern protect the fairies protect bigfoot um however they're like well then how are we going to make a living you know how are we gonna make a living and but because they do yoga they have a yoga studio. So what the Oversoul suggested and what the angel suggested in QHHT was that um, they need to turn it into like a retreat space or a bed and breakfast. Maybe use sacred geometry domes so that it's unique and it has a nice high energy. Um, sacred geometry domes for the different bed and breakfasts and provide this retreat, like a meditation retreat or an art retreat or, you know, day workshops and provide all these different excursions so people can come and enjoy the healing crystal um, land and the healings of the fairies and enjoy this magical space, um, you know, when they come to a meditation retreat or a couple's retreat or a yoga retreat or whatever, and then do these other um extracurricular activities that this family offers because they do organic um, growing as well. So they would have a, um, a three course organic meal that they can enjoy as well. So this is how they're going to be able to live off the land and take care of themselves um, and fulfill their contract to be good stewards of the earth and take care of this precious land. And when they're done making this business venture successful, more of these special lands will be presented to them to start this in other states. And they're like, we had somebody who wanted to give us land in Montana. 
just give it to us. Just take care of this land. And we have somebody in Wyoming just wants to give us this land to just take care of it. So um, they don't want to sell. They just want you to just take care of it and do whatever you want. So that made sense to them that, oh, now we see how this fits in. This is fifth dimensional jobs, 5D jobs. How do you live with Gaia in a peaceful way and still prosper? Um, so those are typically the type of clients I get. And then I get another type of client, again, who are star seeds. And they typically come in um, as in IT or creative jobs. And in their job, what they do is whatever, the, whether the, they write or whether they create digital material or any or video games. Um, basically, what they're doing with presenting this metaphysical material and knowledge in the games that they create or the things that they do is they are normalizing 5D tech and metaphysics so that when we get to the point in our reality that we're creating um, airport out of portals, it's not going to freak us out. It's just going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to go to portal three and go to the drama constellation to go visit my grandkids and then maybe i'll go to portal five and go to paris and go see that you know it's just going to be up normal every day it's not going to be so magical you know so um they are creating that information to kind of tease us in what this would look like so that when it comes to be real it's normal so like my my i'll give you a great example my daughter watches this cartoon called zig and sharky and it's just this mermaid and the shark and their friends, and all they do is run through portals all day long. <laughs> and my daughter's like, honey, mom, why can't we just go through a portal? Why don't we go to the airport? I'm like, because the portals haven't been made yet. <laughs> They're on their way, but they haven't been made yet. So anyways, these are the types of clients that I get through my QHHT sessions who are coming going, I need to deal with my 3D uh, wheel of Dharma issues. I need to work on furthering my uh, my awakening and ascension process. And how do I live with these fifth dimensional energies so that I prosper in the fifth dimension? And this is usually what comes out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that what you get in your BQH sessions as well? What do you get? I want to Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ride the wave. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's really good advice. Kind of ride through ride through the wave that's going on right now. Just kind of ride the wave. And um, eventually we'll settle. Our Mandela effects will we'll still maybe have our personal Mandela effects here and there. But eventually we get to a point in our lifetime, because it's a process, in our lifetime that we get to such a high energy level that our Mandela effects kind of subside because there's we kind of like have gotten to a resonance with the earth <laughs> they were saying they can't hear me i was just saying that i get that you're right where you're supposed to be doing what you're supposed to be doing and not to worry so that was yeah. basically yeah is there any questions in the chats that, that came up or let's see answer <laughs> it's funny um no no questions okay yeah, because sometimes I, I read through it and I'm like, oh, okay, well, then maybe we answered that in, in the, the other one. But let me tell you guys something really quick before we wrap it up because my babies are going to be waking up and my second job is going to start knocking in the door. <laughs> oh, no problem, no problem. But 
as you get into your awakening ascension further, okay, you're going to be having personal Mandela effects and you're to it's totally fine. And if you are not already having your personal Mandela effects beyond local changing and, and you know, those kind of commercial changes, um, you know, where like you may be, because um, I, I talk about my personal Mandela effects um, quite often and talking about it normalizes it because then it doesn't, it's not so taboo. Right. Okay. But you know, if you like I've had somebody where I went to their funeral and <laughs> there they are. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's good. I must have been <laughs> to a really good reality. <laughs> yeah, but that is a trip, isn't it? That's like where, where yeah. you know somebody died and then they're back again and it's like, wait a minute, Uncle Bill died like three years ago. You <laughs> <back again?" laughs> I know, I know. So if you're gonna have your person on Bandela effects, you know, it's it's okay, it's okay. Uh, and you check your uh, check your photo albums, you guys, because that's another thing I've heard about people like they're like, we got in-laws that took this vacation together. We got pictures of this vacation. This vacation would have never happened. They would have never gone anywhere on a yeah, vacation together. You know? Yeah, it's funny. It's it's funny. I mean, when you start looking at your own personal Mandela effects, it's even. I think it's even more of a trip and more amusing than the commercial stuff, which I like the commercial stuff too. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, the personal ones are my, my favorite. But anyways, the thing I wanted to kind of leave the audience with is when you go through your awakening and ascension process, and it is a process, and you're going to travel between different parallel realities uh, and explore different parallel realities. And like I always say, there's no right or wrong way to explore parallel realities and everybody's going to be where they're supposed to be because you're going to get the journey you're supposed to get. Right. Um, but you're going to come into your um, six senses and some of the six senses might spook you out. So um, I really recommend going to a QHHT practitioner and talking to an oversoul directly for help and assistance and direction, because I get these a lot from parents that reach out to me. Um, and I don't regress anybody under 18 for, you know, that that purpose is not it's not allowed, but I can ask questions and answer questions and get directions from the Overso and the guides and the angels about their children who have mm -hmm. unusual six senses mm -hmm. and, and make sense and how to give them um, some direction to kind of how to live and work with that. Um, and some of these six, six senses are um, teleportation, you know, and actually jumping parallel realities um, is teleportation because you're teleporting from mm -hmm. one reality to another. Um, the other thing is you can teleport um, timelines as well. So you might start having Mandela effects where you watch a, like a comedy show that like I watch. Um, I watch my news through comedy because that's how I could take the bad news bears. <laughs> and sometimes I'm like, oh, I already saw this a couple of days ago. And my husband will be like, no, that just published a minute ago. And I'll tell him exactly what's happening. And he's like, okay, well, let's watch it. And it's exactly what I said was going to happen. And so, you know, that's an example of teleportation. Yeah. You know, kind of time jumping. Um, yeah. or the other thing is geolocation. As we get into these higher energies, you people who are in this space and working on this, your spiritual work, will start seeing this stuff. So it might spook you out. Some full disclosure here, um, and Buddhists know this because many Buddhist monks, when they get into the, some of this stuff, since this is all they do all day, they will start honing in on the six senses <laughs> and right. um, and really perfecting it. But you know, we have lives, we have jobs and kids and other things, so you can't spend all day. Um, but it's good to know. Yeah. So another um, one is bilocating. Bilocating. Yeah, yep. I don't know if that's yep. come up for you, but yeah. That's... Oh my dog, my dog, <laughs> my dog um, that I used to have. Um, he would bark in the middle of the night outside and be like, "Let to be let in," and we're like, "How'd you get out here? The doors are all still closed." <laughs> and he did it a couple times, so we eventually said, "Stop." We put him in timeout and said, "Stop <laughs> going outside." <laughs> Because you're waking everybody up to open the door for you. So my dog does it. Dogs do it sometimes too. Um, another one is time manipulation. And that is like if it takes you an hour in rush hour traffic to get to somewhere. And the same time, it all of a sudden you're able to get there in 15 minutes. I've done right. that a couple of times. Yeah. And I think many of you guys may have as well. Mm -hmm. That's, um, that's you know, time manipulation. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you can play with that. That's always fun during rush hour traffic. I love that one. <laughs> um, conscious manifesting is a common one for people in the fifth dimensional energies. And that's thinking something and then it happens. Like thinking, oh, I think I'm going to call my girlfriend and talk about blah, blah. And then she calls you. 
Yeah. Okay, that's conscious manifesting, kind of synchronicities with. Yeah. The- now, 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 to to add to that, what I've been seeing now is sort of like. I want to call it like accidental manifestation. Mm. So we, we've done this so, like in a negative way so many times, you know, but it's like uh, say you're on the way to work and, you know, if this street had an exit off the highway, life would be so much easier. I could exit. I could be right at my job. And then the next thing you know, they're like talking about putting a ramp in there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You, didn't, you never mm-hmm. called the building planners or the city or anything. But, yeah. You know, they just did it for you. Um, so it was kind of accidentally happened. You wished for something and then all of a sudden you see they're doing it and it's like, wow, did I do that? But yeah. it's happening over and over again for many of us. Yes. You know? Yes. That's what they call conscious mess of manifesting. But what I would call that is that's also an example of teleportation, jumping to another reality that already exists, that has right. that ramp made. Right. But for you, it's a smooth transition. Right. You know, so that's that's one thing, kind of quote, quote, conscious manifesting. Another one is um, telekinesis, mm-hmm. matter manipulation. So um, they actually have workshops if you want to, to test out your ability to um, bend spoons. They have those workshops. They're fun, fun workshops where they train you how to use your um, your consciousness to bend a spoon in the in the matrix. And, you know, they I have love that. Yeah. they have one in Oregon. Lot, the guy that wrote Conversations with God. Um, the three book series, he actually used to, I'm not sure if he still does, do one of those workshops, a spoon bending workshop. But um, some examples of telekinesis um, is kind of like like moving a pen across the room. Or sometimes I've had to stop myself after a while on this one because I don't really get into my six senses. They really are, for me, the distraction. Right, right. <laughs> um, so, you know, like I'm, I would be thinking, I think I'm going to go and get some ice cream. And then all of a sudden the garage door will open up. <laughs> go get your ice cream. <laughs> I'm like, right. No, I was just thinking I wanted ice cream. I'm not. Or your I'm husband too- comes in with it. I thought yeah. you might want some ice cream. You're like, oh my I'm gosh, I didn't mean good. to manifest it. You're better <laughs> right. than you're better, you're better. I'm not that good. You're pretty better than I am because I'm like, I think I want to get some ice cream. The garage door opens up, but then I'm like, no, I just thought I wanted to get some ice cream, but I'm too lazy to get off my butt and go in the car and go get ice cream. But in That's these a good higher- thing sometimes. Though. <laughs> yeah. But in these higher dimensional energies, things manifest so much faster, and if you're in these higher frequencies, they manifest faster for you. So again, we have to be mindful. For what we think and feel because it will come come out and so again don't create all your fears but mm-hmm. and then, then i had to stop myself when i'm like i think i'm gonna have some ice cream i'll just go and get an ice cube <laughs> I have to stop myself because i don't want to keep walking downstairs to close the garage doors i'm too lazy for that <laughs> um another one um is very common is channeling 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 um kind of having connection with your angels and your guides and so yeah. forth um, they can only tell you only so much until you're ready. So they can kind of spoon feed you a little bit. Mm-hmm. But they tell would, you what you need to know. What I've been noticing, they, they tell you what you need to know. Maybe not what you want to know the whole thing, you know, but they tell you what you need to know as you need to know. It. Yeah, spoon feed you. I, yeah. I had a conversation with a gal um, very recently and um, she, you know, she's very awakened and, and so forth. But the concept of Mandela effects and parallel realities just blew her mind. It was so new, and she was really challenged by it because it made her question her worldview. Oh, yeah. And so I was like, well, you must be early in your awakening. All right. <laughs> Don't worry. We're around. <laughs> right. <laughs> so just play with it. But, you know, um, but yeah, so, you know, they'll, if you do channeling, they'll feed you in spoonfuls a little bit, um, depending on kind of. Oh, gauge. Right. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, channeling telepathy. like Telepathy thinking, was another one I was going to say that's been happening a lot more lately. Oh, it's going to happen a lot more. As we oh, get it's been crazy. It's like, I don't know how many times I'm talking to somebody and they're like, oh my gosh, I was just thinking that. And I'm like, why is this happening more? It has to be telepathy. It's so telepathy. for me, for me, it's like, did I send that to them? Did I hear them thinking about it? Who thought of it first? So I'm still at those very early stages where I don't even know who thought of it first at this point. I just yeah. know that there was some sort of communication going on because we both <laughs> knew out of the clear blue what we were going to talk about or, you know, oh, the yeah. same thought. Oh, yeah, telepathy. I'm just like, can you close your thoughts, please? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 
<laughs> broadcast unknowingly. <laughs> right. And sometimes you can spot it. It'd be so out of the blue. You're like, I know I didn't think about that. Are you yeah, thinking about husband... blah, blah, blah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my husband's so used to it. He looks kind of walk downstairs. I'm like, I know you want to go to Dairy Queen. You want this and this and this and this. Okay, I'll do it in like an hour after my meeting. <laughs> he's like, oh, this, that's exactly. Thank you. <laughs> but he's like, okay. Or he's or he like, hey, I was. I was like, yeah, you know do this and he's like yeah yeah what do you think about that or he'll come to me and he'd be like hey what did you think about that it was like yes let's have let's have that for dinner because <laughs> you know? so, we're in the way the same wavelength but um you know i like, wanted to i wanted to mention before because i think people came in here that weren't here earlier oh yeah you actually you're giving out the your book your newest one until july 1st yeah right? um yeah so i so here's here's the book beautiful um, Buddhist it's mandalas. Called, yeah, it's called um, Buddhist mandalas explore explore parallel realities with sacred geometry, and it's it's kind of a scientific book showing the science behind um, your Merkaba. Love that, that artwork everybody has. Too. Yeah, and of course um, the back is a picture of my son and myself. I had to share it, um, but anyway, you, you and your daughter on the other one. I have right. my daughter on my other Buddhism books, so they take turns. Um, okay, so I, I just wanted to bring that up so you guys can go get that for free until July 1st, the ebook version of that. If you want that beautiful artwork on the hardcover copy, you can actually order it from the link below. It's the Amazon um, author's page link. It's the very top link. But I, the reason I, I wanted to put, get that out of the way is because someone's asking which book should they read first if they wanted to purchase one of your books. So that oh, aside... I see. You know what, um, if you want to, so just really quick with the Amazon, like when you go to Amazon and you look up Von Galt, V-O-N-G-A-L-T, um, just click on the author's name and that will pull up the, the author's page of all their books. You can find the book that way. Mm -hmm. um, but like, again, until July 1st, I'm doing that um, Amazon five-day giveaway for the ebook to help raise its ranking and also to help raise consciousness. And I'm actually also advertising on Facebook. So maybe the next time we do this, let's see where in the world most of these downloads and the interest is coming from. Because it's very fascinating to see who is responding to the material. Like, who wants to learn about their Merkaba? <laughs> yeah, and, and it's really helpful when you guys read the book to actually get on there and give her a review so other people oh, yes, please. know that helps to rate it and give her a review. That way other people coming along will say, yes. hey, I'm going to read it and get your input on it. So yes. I always try to get people to do that. And especially oh. if she's giving it to you for free, it's it doesn't take but a minute to write a yes, quick review. Yes, please. I I that so appreciate it. it. You never know if your review is going to um, affect somebody to to get the book and it's going to change their life and you just had a hand in it. Right. So, and that happens as well. So between the two books, between Buddhist mandalas, um, I'm sorry, between Buddhist mandalas, explore parallel realities mm -hmm. with sacred geometry and between Buddhist guide to manifest parallel realities, they both do, this one is more about the essential building blocks of addressing your abundance blocks and your third dimensional issues. Mm -hmm. It's lowering down your energy from getting into that fifth dimensional space mm -hmm. of a higher Merkaba. And so if you have a lot of what I call 3D dramas to resolve, like you maybe have some repressed issues with your mom, your dad, your sister, your ex-husband, whatever, those kind of things mm -hmm. like that triggers in your life, yeah. then you still have something that is holding down your energy. Um, and so you don't want that to come up in the higher energies to resolve in a bad way. So right. if you are having that and you're still working on your wheel of Dharma, I recommend the Buddhist Guide to Manifest Parallel Realities because that goes over how to use the basic principles of the Four Noble Truths and Eightfold Paths to Address Your Abundance Blocks or Your Dense Energies. Um, the other one is to learn about your your true um, light body, your Merkaba. And so um, this one, um, Buddhist Mandalas, this one is really good because when you study sacred geometry, like Ezekiel did in the Bible or Metatron, um, when you study sacred geometry, you actually, it, it it is a tool as well that helps you rewire your consciousness to a fifth dimensional level. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like when you're watching symbols or things on TV, it generates a certain emotion to you mm -hmm. or it generates certain knowledge. Well, when you're studying sacred geometry, it also generates knowledge about um, your Merkaba and about consciousness as well. 
So it's kind of like a visual tool that helps you um, kind of get into those higher frequencies. So um, both are good, and you know, you can you. There's really no end game, so you can read them at different times. And I have other ones that I just haven't got around to doing yet, but more will come down the road. I'm only 40, almost 41 years old, so there'll be plenty more. This that that's plenty of stuff for you to work on for a while. <laughs> <laughs> but let's finish really quick because I can hear the kids freaking out. Uh, and I, I need to relieve my husband. He's very fifth dimensional, but he's also needs help. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but so, um, you know, channeling, telepathy, precognition, um, and being empathetic. And here's the thing, like a lot of empaths, kind of like Deanna Troy from Star Trek, well, they won't know if they're, if they're feeling, if the way they feel about something is actually their own or somebody else's that they're feeling. Right. So that could be a little bit, um, you know, a little bit confusing, so it kind of, kind of has to work. I mean, it's just like if you can run fast, how do you focus on your ability and how do you use it in the right time and place without, um, you know, hurting or taking advantage of somebody, you know? Exactly. So it, it's just, a, it's just another, it's just another sense. And the thing with your six senses and your spiritual gifts is if you use it to manipulate and hurt people, you're going to lose it anyways. Because it's higher energy vibration and skill, and if you're not doing higher energy integrous um, things with it, it's it's going to lose its power. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just be conscious of that. Um, so empathetic astral projection. You can go into the lower realms, but you know those lost souls have been playing those games for a very long time, and they'll suck up all your time. Um, the higher stuff is more fun. Um, <laughs> The remote viewing is another ability that some people will automatically have. So these are more kind of like in the channeling mind space. Um, the other thing is invisibility, where people don't see you walking towards them and all of a sudden you have to touch them. <laughs> be like, oh my God, where were you? I was waving and walking straight to you the whole time. <laughs> but you're in such a high frequency that so sometimes people don't see you until you physically like touch them or talk to them. And then they like tune in to your to you. So you may see some of that. Um and as we get to these higher energies, if you do come into that ability, that's an interesting one. Um another one, it's very, very new and it is the ability to levitate or flight okay very small amounts of people will have this ability a couple buddhist monks will will work on levitation ability a lot of it is about sound frequency and getting to their harmonics to kind of be light enough for that the other one is kind of x-ray vision like kind of being able like dogs do this where they can kind of feel where your cancer tumor is right that kind of stuff. Right. Um, and then weather manipulation, like going, oh, no, it's not going to rain today. It's going to be sunny. And it becomes sunny for the funeral. Right, <laughs> so, right. Saying that. Um, and then, of course, you have, this, you know, the superhuman strength. Um, and you have, of course, the energy healing. So many different energy healing modalities out there. Um, Buddhism has a wide variety of energy healing modalities. And um, in the West now with QHHT and all these other things, there's so many different ways to do energy healing. So I want to leave your, your, your audience with a quick energy healing tip that they could do. Perfect. And they can practice with because energy healing is the perf is one of the basics that we teach in our schools. So when um, so let's say you have a cat or a dog that's in pain that's really hurting. Um, I had a friend call me freaking out because her cat is dying and she knows their cat is dying and she's just just feeble. And so she said, "Come do your thing." I said, okay, fine, I'll come do the thing. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to come do my thing only because you're on the way to my grocery store. So I'm going to come do the thing. So what you do, remember the universe is in everybody. It's a stream of consciousness. Is you just put your hand on the, the animal that is suffering. You put the hand on the animal that's suffering. And just like the meditation I taught, the really quick meditation technique I taught in the last session, you empty your mind. So you think about what you're thinking and your mind kind of think two things at the same time. So you think about what you're thinking and that will wipe out 
what you're thinking. So you're a blank slate. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. So, oh. okay. Cause you're freezing up on me. So anyways, so you're a blank slate. So think about what you're thinking and you're a blank slate. And when you're that blank slate, insert the, cause, cause now you're in that field with the universe. Um, think this thought think you are me and i am you and we're healthy we're completely fine and think of the most loving image to you so you know you have my hand on the the dying cat and the image i have is of um its owner petting them and just giving them love and that's the image and then all of a sudden the cat started getting up it was like i want to get out of here i started clawing to get up and was, this thing was feeble and like almost dying two seconds ago at that time to get up and like you get off me stop wow. scratching <laughs> but that's a quick energy healing technique that you could do on any um pet that um that is really struggling or maybe possibly passing away so do the the hand and the the meditation energy healing and that will that that will help work as well so awesome. practice with that and then as these energies come up don't freak out when you start coming into your six senses or your existing six sense starts amplifying because you're in this advanced state of awakening and ascension that's awesome Exciting. I guess you got to go do your mother thing, and we're going to have you back <laughs> real soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, let's, let's put it on the calendar. Yeah, definitely. We'll do that as soon as we go off the air. Thank you, guys. Make sure you go get that book. You know, you've only got a couple of days, July, uh, July 1st. July 1st. Oh, I really wanted to, before I forget, before I forget, I want. I always wanted to do my parting message that I get mm -hmm. from the Overso in my hypnosis sessions. Sure. So um, in every single session, I always get the same message from the Overso. So I put it into these words um, that I want to leave any audience that may have not heard it before with. So the Overso says the same thing. And basically it says that you've always been enough. Use the gifts and the resources all around you to, to create the life that you want to experience. A life full of joy and love. And the spirit world will nudge you through synchronicity. You could do it. So that's, that's the, mess, the parting message from the Oversoul from my clients. That's a perfect message. And it's a constant stream. The more I look for it, the more I see signs all around. It's like, you know, it's, it's there's never a limit to it. And they can come mm -hmm. in all sorts of ways. So mm -hmm. keep your eyes open, you guys. Yeah, we're going to a whole new reality of homo spiritus. So <laughs> <laughs> it'll be funny. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you so much, Vaughn. And we'll have you back really soon. Lots of love, light, and unity to each and every one of you guys. Peace. Be sure to check out the website at UOTF.net. There you will find the live stream schedule displayed in your local time right there on the front page. Below that, you'll find links to take the Beyond Quantum Healing course at a discounted rate, purchase our book Mandela Effect Friend or Foe in paperback or ebook, or to contact me to schedule a BQH session. At the top of the site, you'll find links to help support the work I do. Access the free private forum where you can discuss organizing get-togethers in your area, Mandela effects, and more. Thank you all so much for being here. Mm -hmm.